So welcome back everyone to group work seven and we're going to have a look at relating the other way. Now the related table function is created on the one side as in the products table and it looks up values in the many side so it will pull or retrieve information from the data table such as the sales table. It isn't advised as it can be expensive in terms of processing. Let's think about that for a moment. So we're on the one side, which is a lookup table, and we're asking to retrieve via the related table function information from a data table, such as the sales. Well, if we're looking up a, a particular product, a single product, in a data table such as sales, there's going to be hundreds, if not thousands, of instances of that value. So what the Power Pivot engine has to do is aggregate all of those values. It has to sum them all up in memory when it's gone through the entire table, which could be tens of millions of rows of data, and then bring back a single value to deposit in the lookup table. Therefore, it's expensive in terms of processing. However, when needs must, it can be used in an expression to create a calculated column. So let's look at an example. So in the products table, we'll count the number of each product sold in the sales table. So we'll select the products table and we'll insert a new calculated column named number of products sold. We'll select the product subcategory key, right click and insert column. And we'll name that number of products sold. and hit enter. So the DAX expression or function is the related table. So again, before we insert that, the tooltip says it returns the related tables filtered so that it can only include the related rows. Okay, so we'll use tab to insert the function and notice in IntelliSense all we're getting here is a list of tables. So it evaluates the table as a whole. So it's going to be the sales table. We're looking up the number of products sold in the sales table. So if we just hit the closing parenthesis now and hit enter, we'll get an error message. So what it's telling us here is the information provided so far is not enough to tell the DAX engine what to do, i.e. what action to take. All we have stated so far is a table name and the Power Pivot engine doesn't know what to do. So we're missing a vital piece of the expression. So we're going to click just after the equals sign and just before related table. And we're going to enter the count rows function and that's all that's required. So now the DAX engine knows what to do. It knows to count the rows of the sales table. So we'll just click at the end and because we've opened up another parenthesis, we have to close it and then we hit enter. Now it may look as if nothing's happened, but we'll get a clue if we hit the drop down and we have results. What it is, is that the product key 397 all the way down to 408 in the screenshot there, there's no results. But if we scroll down, we'll start seeing results. Okay. What we can do here is just sort largest to smallest. So let's backtrack a little bit here and analyse exactly what we've done. So we use the related table function in a lookup table, which is on the one side, i.e. the products table. And we've asked it to go to the sales table and count all the rows in the sales table. Let's just hop over to diagram view. So remember what's connecting the products table and the sales table is the product key. Back to data view. So effectively, the related table is looking at row one in the products key and sees the product key 477. Through the relationship it has with the sales table, it's going to hop over to the sales table 
look at the product key number 47 and go through the entire sales table counting up how many times that product 477 has been sold. Goes through the entire table counting up each sale and then comes back and deposits the result here. Next it will do exactly the same for this product key, this product key and this product key and each time returning the results in our new number of products sold column. But as I mentioned earlier, it's not advisable to use the related table for calculated columns really, and especially not in the values area of the pivot table. However, the results of these calculations, if you do need to use it, can be used to perform the basis of another calculation. And I'll show you now what I mean by that. So let's insert a new column to the right of the number of products sold. And we'll call that bestsellers. Now this might look a little bit scary, but it's just a nested if statement. So just bear with me here. What we're going to do is generate a text result using a nested if to return the values of top seller, standard seller or slow seller. And we'll do it like this. So we start with an if statement and hit enter. And we're going to say if the number of product sales are greater than or equal to 2000. So it will be number of, there it is, number of products sold. And we're just going to tab to insert that. And it's going to be greater than or equal to 2000. If it is, we want the expression to return the text top seller. However, if number of products sold, there it is again, is greater than 1000, the text result should state that it's a standard seller. And if it's none of those, we want the text result to state it's a slow seller. And then we've got two ifs, so we close with two parenthesis and just hit the enter key. Now we're going to insert a new pivot table. So let's click insert and we want it to be in the existing worksheet and in cell G3. Now from the products table we're going to insert bestseller into columns from the product table, we're going to insert the product name into rows and then bestseller again into the values. We're going to filter the bestsellers so that we only see the top seller. And the last thing is just get rid of the grand total. So we we'll right click on I4 and just remove the grand total. So this pivot results in only displaying all of the top sellers, which were any product sales over 2000. Right, last thing to do is just save all your good work. And I really hope that gives you some food for thought and some ideas of how you might use the related table and the related functions. So next up guys is the practice exercise on page 45 and I'll see you next in the solutions. So good luck and I'll see you there.